Hold on. And I want to welcome everybody to the session four of um, from social media to social discipleship. And I'm um, glad to have Kathleen and Carol and Marco, Laura, Randy, Bob, Jackie, Taylor, and Reverend Vicki with us tonight. Um, it's important that you guys are coming consistently because you won't feel like you missed something important because tonight's really the night where we put all the pieces together and it's it's a lot of information. And so you will have a document to look at. Um, I'm gonna share my screen and hopefully I won't have the same issues I had. I have not had any internet issues this today. <laughs> so I'm hoping and praying that that, um, that stays the way it's supposed to. So um, I, I put uh, an email together um, with this group guidelines in it and I emailed it to everybody. So that's not the one I want. Um, it's gonna live on the website because that way everyone can find it when they need it. Um, I haven't. I haven't um, put it out there publicly yet. I'm actually going to create a page for the online church community on the website so that we have uh, something for people to uh, look at when they visit our website so they can see we do have a little group. So if you open the PDF I sent, it's um, basically going to talk about, and it's pulling up right now, some of the guidelines for the group. Um, I don't know if we can put this in full screen mode here. One moment. Let me see if I can. Nope. Anyway, so um, right now, uh, we are at the point where we talked about why we want to do this and how it relates to discipleship and what discipleship means in a digital format. We talked about why Facebook um, and, and the structure that we needed and, and how many people are on Facebook. So it's like trying to uh, use something that's already prolific in people's lives so that we can um, not have to work so hard to get an audience. Um, so this is the graphic that I've, hopefully you've all been to the, the page. Um, has anybody in the group not been to the Facebook page yet? Hold on just a minute, please. Um, one moment. Oh, the police cars are coming. I'm on a webinar, Lenore. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's me. There were some I fire trucks. You know, we're in the country now, so when something happens, it's exciting. Um, we don't uh, usually see uh, police or fire engine lights right in our right next door. Um, I haven't been. Okay. So um, great, if you could, have I, I, I'm pretty sure I invited you. I'm pretty sure you accepted the invite. Okay. Um, again, if there's somebody in the group that hasn't been to the page or been invited to it, please uh, let me know and I will um, send you an invitation. And I'm not sure if I can invite you if you're not a friend. So if you have, if we're not friends, if you could friend request me, um, I'll accept your friend request and then I can invite you to the, to the group page. Or I can send you an email. Um, so what I wanted to talk about tonight is actually the, the vetting process for uh, volunteer admins for the page. And it's pretty basic. And this is not me saying how things are going to be. This is me putting out there 
what I came up with for this particular draft of the document. It's not written in stone and we can really add to it or take away from it. Um, that's why I'm going over it with you. So, so basically you would need to be a, an MCC member, not necessarily a resurrection member for a year or more. Um, just because we have um, some pretty specific mission and values and uh, a church is LGBT friendly and you know all of the different things about MCC churches and the denomination that um, we need to add to the documentation that we put out there so that people understand who we are and what we're about. Um, and so I'm going to offer a Facebook group training um, at, a, at sometime before February. So um, January 18th is when we're announcing the group live to the congregation and to your friends and family that you want to invite to the to the group. But um, that's like a dress rehearsal for what we're going to be doing live or online. So I, there's a form on our website, and I'm not sure how many of you have gone to our website either, but there's a lot of stuff on the website that I want to like put out there so that people know, you know, they can, there's ways that and I want to identify those things that people can do virtually, like maybe use a, an initial letter system or something. Um, I don't know. Somebody was calling me. Um, so I don't know who that is. Call me. Um, this is how you can join groups in person at the church but it's not um it's not designated yet for virtual or not i need to somebody's trying to call me with facebook which is kind of amazing. i don't know who this person is uh, okay i so also set up a test room in um using Facebook to, to show everybody what's possible. So hold on a minute. I don't know if this is going to affect my ability to talk to you guys, but oh, there's, there's Kate. Hi, how are you? Hi. Can you guys see Kate? Yeah, okay. How's it going? <laughs> Good. Um, we're actually um, in our social media group tonight, um, learning about how we're going to use social media. Um, and Facebook groups to facilitate online discipleship. And so this was a test group for us to see how it worked. And um, I did invite a few people to I'm it. I'm sorry, I was late. I'm sorry. It's probably not gonna work because I'm, um, I'm on a Zoom. So I'm just gonna, um, disconnect from the room. I just wanted to see how it worked or if it worked and what it looked like. So, so it's basically a two-way conversation with uh, people in the group itself. So if you create a room, you can set up a time and a place uh, or a time and um, you know a day for when you wanna have a meeting online with people. So it's another way to have um, a virtual conversation outside of Zoom. So, so thank you for checking us out, Kate. And um, I'm sure. going to disconnect and I'll be in touch. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Okay, bye. No problem. Okay, so that was pretty cool. So I think what happened was um, you can see here, I set it up for 6.30, I should have set it up for seven. But basically um, the, the people in the group are notified that we're having a meeting in this test room. But I scheduled it. So at the time that it was scheduled, 
um, somebody came into the room or a few minutes late, but it didn't, it didn't notify me that someone was in the room until someone was actually in the room. It didn't start the, the room um, live. So I'm going to go back to um, the website um, because <laughs> I was so distracted when that was ringing. Um, these are all of our groups on the website that we have our in-person groups. And I wanna add to that um, with the virtual groups. So there will be uh, more added to this as time goes by. So um, there's a way for you to see um, what we have going on at the church through this connections portal. And if you click on this, it takes you to the church app or the, the, nope, that's not what I want to do. Okay, so that's an email. Somebody set that up as an email. So you can see you can become an usher or a volunteer, all of those things that we offer at the church. And then here's the way you can do um, the connection. So the Connect with Resurrection is going to be our kind of virtual thing as well for people to that's another email, sorry. There's got to be a way for them to get to the church app. I don't think I clicked on the right thing. Okay, so here it is. Um, so right now, if you want to be a, a volunteer or part of a church ministry, part of something, one of those things that just showed, you hit this register button and it takes you to our um, church center uh, app where you would fill in the blanks. You would fill in the blanks and I wanna um, augment this form so that we can um, include the people that we want to include for our virtual campus. So if you never knew this was here, now you know. Um, on the website, there's a specific page for um, registering to join a volunteer or ministry opportunity. So there's that. Okay. So that's the connections page. And Georgette Monahan is in charge of uh, when someone uh, sets up an event or those emails that I clicked on uh, when I was looking at the page actually notify somebody within those groups um, that there's an interest in joining that group. And then the person that's in charge of that group gets back with them. So it's all kind of automated. Um, the group structure and information I went to um, Facebook and I Googled um, online churches. And actually I was really surprised at what I saw. There's not a huge amount of them. Um, there, there's one um, church that came up that had 74,000 members, which was shocking to me. Um, but that church has been on Facebook since 2016, and that's how far they've gone and grown since 2016. So they've been doing it for a while. Um, this is showing our online church. It pops up now as a group, but it shows it as private. So when you, when you hit the search bar and you search for online churches, we pull up. So as soon as the church or the group goes public, um, we'll have the ability to welcome members that are not part of our church. So this is the church that I looked at, the Life Church Online. And I actually asked to be made a member of the church because since they've been doing this for so long and this is not their first rodeo, I thought I would look at how they're doing things successfully and maybe emulate some of it. It's really good when you have somebody else who's doing something successfully 
before you um, try doing something yourself and, and go through all the trial and errors of, of creating something big and good. Um, there are some other churches. Um, you can see none of them have a huge amount of uh, members, but we do have a few mega churches. So it's, it's interesting to see what comes up. And pretty soon, uh, resurrection is going to come up online. So that's really exciting to me. Um, go back to the document. So um, what I found when I wanted to join that church was they moderate the joining process. So what we would want to do is when we set up our group rules, maybe I'm using this as an example and I got it from that life church. So I would like everybody to take a look at these group rules and give me feedback. Tell me if there's something in here that sounds like it's, it's out of place for our particular thinking and values or we should add something to it. So I do plan on making like a welcome video and having that available to new members so that they know what's going on. Maybe have um, some of the um, pastors, ministers of the church um, having a like a kind of a round table discussion about what we do at, at a resurrection and you know why why it's so great to be a part of us. Um, and there's ways that we can, they are linking stuff to their website. So I thought it was really important that, um, you know, we have a website page for the online church so people can see our website and all the things that we do um, in our campus church. So um there's um, an introductory paragraph from them about what they want, you know, people to, you know, why they're there um, so that people don't have to go through life alone. Um, and people, as we talked about in a prior class, we talked about relevancy. So what is it that people are looking for? How can we be relevant to people looking for church online? So um, there's also a statement about why they have their Facebook group. So they're talking about discipleship. They're not talking about anything smaller than that, um, which, is, which is good because it's kind of generic and it doesn't, you know, we have a lot of conversations um, about what kind of church we are. And yes, we are friend, friendly to the LGBTQ community, but we want to encourage people from all walks of life to feel comfortable at resurrection. So we don't want to disclude people or, or not include them. Um, so we want to make kind of a generalized statement so that we don't come off as just being a gay church when someone hits our page right away. But we also want people to know that we are um, allies and friends um, and a place, a safe place where they can come and meet people and find ways to worship. Um, so I want to look at this paragraph and rewrite it is what I'm saying. So if you have any input on what you would say, um, I would appreciate anybody just giving me input. You can go through here and say in the paragraph on, um, you know, paragraph whatever, it says why we have our Facebook group. And, you know, you can, you can send me an email, you can write it in a Word document and send it to me. You can take this and, um, you know, scratch through it and make um, pencil comments on it and scan it and send it to me. However it works for you to give me feedback would be wonderful. Um, I'll take it. I'll take anything I can get. 
So the next thing that they offered was their guidelines for their Facebook group. So they talked about being a safe zone, um, discuss, discussing issues that we're facing, encouraging each other. So all of those are pretty generic. Um, we definitely want a solicitation free zone. So we will not allow any type of selling whatsoever in this group ever. Um, there's, there's not a place for that. So um, we just wanna make sure that people understand maybe in the future we'll like connect the bookstore to it. So people can buy stuff online like t-shirts and you know stuff like that. But right now we're not gonna allow um, members to solicit something that they sell. Um, we're gonna allow people to give comments and thoughts to posts that are made. But again, we're gonna moderate them so that we make sure that they're appropriately worded and not going to be hurtful or offensive to anybody in the group. And, you know, that's always subjective, but um, I think, you know, we pretty much would have a consensus on something that was inappropriate and something that was okay. So we'll cross those bridges when we get there, but we're not going to be like the, the post police, but we definitely want to keep the conversations positive and uplifting and make sure that, you know, any kind of negativity or, um, misinformation is not what our posts are allowed to say. So, um, so once again, they're providing a, um, an email address for their online church. So we'll have to create that as well. Somebody will have an access to that online church email address. Um, and then their, their church is private online. It's not um, a public space. And I don't know um, what the reasoning for that would be other than they want to really have control over who they let into the church or into their online space. So maybe after a certain amount of time, they were getting um, a bunch of wackadoodles or, you know, somebody that wasn't wasn't posting right or it was just too much maintenance. So we'll have to find out, you know, over time what works for us. It's easier to make, a, you know, to make it private again if we need to. The, the group is visible, which means or findable online. So we're visible and we're private right now. So anybody can find the group. They just have to ask to be let in. Um, we have uh, group apps. There are apps that we can attach to the group for use. And one of them that I have attached that I'm not sure that I really need is the buffer app, which is a way for us to schedule posts. But there's a scheduling app within the group already. So I'm not sure I even need that at this time. The only thing I, the only reason why I did that is I use it to post for our, um, our regular uh, resurrection page. And I thought it would be good to, a good tool to use when we want to have some posts that are um, put on both pages. So not everything's appropriate for the group because if it talks about in-person stuff, obviously it's not gonna work for the group. So we have to be selective on what we share. So here it says the group, their group was created in July of 2016. So they've been at it for a while. A lot of um, these other groups are newish because, um, you know, maybe they found this book like I did, or maybe they knew early on what the benefits of being a group were. Um, so, you know, a lot of a lot of churches, uh, you know, it's just a trial and error and discovery. So we're discovering this together. Um, okay. So going, this is still things that I discovered in this other group that we want to talk about and consider for our group. So 
questions that moderate group membership. This is a question they asked me, and that was, do you agree to show respect to everyone? And even if they disagree with your opinions, and I had to say yes or no. <laughs> so obviously if I said no, they weren't gonna let me in the group, um, but we can have more questions, um, definitely. But that one kind of encompasses everything. If someone's different than you, then you're going to res show respect to them or you're not going to be in our group. So the group, the group rules, um, they are um, re requiring that we agree to the group rules in order to be, uh, in order to be allowed to be part of the group. So. Miss Debbie Mansfield is joining us. Okay, so also here, um, there's going to be uh, the video I was talking about, about the group itself, and it'll live on Facebook. The video will be hosted on Facebook. Uh, I wanna open that link. Um, but uh, I tried to click on the video and it didn't work. And I don't know if it's because I'm not a part of the group yet, which I think that's what happened, but I couldn't watch their video yet. Um, and then it goes to if you have a prayer request. So I guess we can put something in there about prayer requests. Um, you know, that's a thing that we need to talk about. And if you have an opinion about it or not, um, we would have to have someone in that capacity in order to offer prayer requests. Um, I know that other churches, like mega churches, are like, um, you know, send us your prayer request or call us with a prayer request or whatever. And then, you know, they have a group of people that just do, uh, you know, generalized praying over for them. That's something I would rely on um, Reverend Vicki or one of the other pastors to give us guidance on. So, you know, what do you think about how prayer should work in the group and how we should administer prayer? I guess we could point them to our existing prayer groups that are already up and running, which I think that's a good idea. So we don't have to like reinvent the wheel because they're online already. But if someone needs, uh, you know, more than just a group prayer or if they need pastor pastoral care um you know we should have a way for them i think there is a way for them on the website um and we can link to that uh if they need if they need help um questions how to ask a question um yeah more about if you want to join us um, they talk about the fact that they have uh, gr groups in 74 countries or something like that. Well, that's pretty amazing. And eventually we could have like subgroups that meet in certain countries, but we're not to that level at, at all. And um, so that's something we'll, we'll talk about when that time comes in our, in our ministry. Um, so of course we're not going to allow promotion spam fundraising or inappropriate posts that's just a given um things that i wanted to say specific to resurrection were um things that we put on the website about inclusion community spiritual transformation and justice so if you have something to add to that because i'm just kind of winging it with you know, what to write, um, I would really appreciate the input. Um, our mission and values and the campus rules, that was, you know, something that I need to write. So those are left blank. Um, we experienced this other church's campus rules, you know, which ones do we want to move down under our campus rules and emulate, or, you know, we're definitely going to make our own um, it's just important that we make sure we don't forget something important that would, you know, make someone feel like they weren't welcome or make someone feel like they weren't part of the group. 
um, that kind of thing. So um, another suggestion was to have frequently asked questions about the community. So I would say um, the community being the Resurrection MCC community, um, the online community. Um, so I put these questions down, but if you think there should be an addition to this, I would appreciate your input. So um, do I have to be a, a member of Resurrection to join the group? No, you don't. Um, do I have to be LGBTQ plus to be a member of the group? No, you don't. Um, do I have to be Christian? That's why we're being disciples. So you don't need to be Christian, but you definitely need to respect the Christians in the group. Um, does it cost anything? No, it doesn't cost anything. And we want to definitely include ways that people can um, make donations or give online. Um, everything we do requires resources, everything, including a virtual church. So we definitely want to have a way for those people online to give, um, whether that's something I guess I need to talk to Reverend Choi about, like, do we want to have a, a designated uh, giving for the online community, or does it go into general tithes, you know, that kind of thing. So that would be definitely something we would have to talk about. And you could give me input on. Um, we talked, I guess, last week about, you know, where could, where could people come from to join the group and having the group open to public means that anybody in the world, anybody on Facebook that can see the group could technically join it. So if they don't speak English, that's gonna be difficult for them to be a part of the group. And, um, you know, it's, it's not possible at this time to have non-English speaking group members, but maybe in the future, you know, especially with, um, Los Todos being part of our MCC, you know, there's a good chance that, you know, there could be a Spanish um, subgroup within the online group. That would be something I need to talk to Ulysses about. Um, another thing we need to consider is a privacy policy. So anything you do online requires that you have some kind of privacy policy. And so, um, this is real generic, but I also have, we also have a privacy policy on the website itself. So I'd probably reference that as well. And we talked about people living in countries. Um, I'm not sure if it was a general group conversation or if it was a conversation I just had with Carol <laughs> yeah, uh, yesterday, um, but we talked about, um, you know, cultural differences and what that might look like in our group, because there are countries where being gay is illegal um, against the law. And in some places it's punishable by, by death. So, you know, how we can't possibly guarantee anybody that joins our group that they would have any kind of protection. And so uh, from, you know, from um, repercussions of, you know, being in a group that has affiliation to the LGBTQ community. So it's definitely something we need to think about. And I'm, I think that it's one of those, we'll cross that bridge when it happens type things, but we need people to know that, um, you know, we can't guarantee any kind of privacy once you're in the group. Um, and one thing I will respect is that I won't share somebody's um, profile picture or something that they post online um, publicly without their permission. So definitely um, we're going to uh, implement using media releases when it's necessary. So anytime we have um, Zoom meetings or recorded meetings, everyone has to know that those meetings are going to be public. So 
if you participate in them, your image or video of you, what you say, what you think, how you present yourself on that, on that recording is going to go out to the cyberspace. Um, and then I had some ideas about subgroups that um, we could potentially create as initial groups, maybe. Um, taking it from when we had the Dreaming Forward, um, the Dreaming Forward sessions, um, you know, some of this would be maybe something um, to have, uh, you know, a, a group for people of a certain age or a group for, uh, you know, LGBTQ and recovery or something, outreach and discipleship. Just those are some ideas that I had. You can definitely um, tell me that that sounds good or here's some more ideas. Um, these would be um, considered community groups. Um, we already have, like I said, we already have some community groups, but most of them aren't online. So we need to create some. Um, and we would have to find people to moderate those groups or at least check in on them you know from time to time so this kind of stuff is going to require resources and people who would be dedicated to you know working those groups and making sure that we have content going into the group um, and engagement worthy information kind of thing so we're taking baby steps right now, but it's definitely something that we could. Yes, Bob. What can I? Yeah, where are the the subgroups on the Facebook page? Um, I have not connected them yet. Okay. I mean, is there a a specific uh, button that you push in there? I because I was I looking... haven't found. <laughs> yeah, I haven't I haven't found that out yet. I know it exists. Okay. Um, but I'm still yeah, in discovery kinda, mode. On yeah, I was kind of looking, and I I was trying to find it, and I couldn't find it either. So <laughs> okay, well, so thanks. let's uh, yeah, I'll definitely probably or I I will have an answer to that next time. Let me okay. see. Okay, right. my screen again. Can I ask a question before you? Yes. Move? Yes. Now, correct, yes. I may be wrong about some uh, Facebook capabilities, but I know, like, um, I have friends on Facebook that don't speak English, and I don't, I'm not fluent in their language either, and um, I mean, Facebook has such a great, um, you know, means of translation, and I think when I clicked on this closed captioning, it gave you the option of what you were translating, but aren't there some apps that can translate even if you're doing video. So maybe we shouldn't say that a limitation is to speak English, but you should just clarify that all of our um, posts and everything are in English, but they don't necessarily, I mean, I, I, I just don't, I wonder sure. if it's better language than limit, than, than saying so, to speak English, but saying, but just say, saying we will be, posting and uh, speaking in English on all of these videos. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that someone who uses like a translator service might not want to want to join. Well, I know that like when I see a post in Spanish, I can click yeah. on translate this post into English and it'll translate it. Right. So yes it probably would be okay for people who, you know, are from other countries to participate and we use that feature. It's just, they would have to understand that they would have to engage with us using a translation feature that we don't have anybody speaking that native language at this time. But yes, I, I, I definitely agree with that. Definitely. Um, and yes, there's closed captions. So perhaps in our instructions on how to join the community, we can highlight that as part of 
um, how they can join us in a different language. But thank you for that. Thank you for that. Mm. Can you send me an email with that says that? <laughs> so I remember. <laughs> now me, you know, I'm, I have too much going on. Okay. And let's see, group skills. Um, so I talked about training. So there's some training, I think, that needs to happen around um, doing lives. Um, if, you, if you don't have experience with doing rooms on Facebook or a Facebook Live, it can be super intimidating. <laughs> especially if it's live because live video or live streams on Facebook are accessible by, they just, they, they broadcast is what I'm trying to say. So if you don't want your stuff broadcast, then you have to set it up as a Zoom or some other way and have a private, a private event. So, um, and there's ways to do that, but we have to talk about it. Um, and I, when we uh, had that call coming in um, from Kate <laughs> and I set up the Facebook room and she started ringing, um, that was my first experience with a Facebook room. So she saw on the group page that we were doing a test room at 6.30 and she got on, she, she entered the room. So um, that's a wonderful thing to have happen because I wasn't, I didn't know what would happen. So that's a tool we can use. We just need to know how to use it. So, and then how to drive people to register for the church app and planning center, super important. Cause all, all of the stuff that we do is gonna run through planning center, our central programming and event software. Um, if you're gonna schedule events on your own, I just need to show you how to do that. Certainly want other people besides me to learn how to do this stuff because it, it's, it's kind of a lot. I think the thing that we might need the most help with would be someone in a graphic design capacity because you have to make a header for the event or you have to make us, we call them slides. Um, like in the church services, you have to make uh, visuals to go with your events or visuals to go with what we put in the mobilizer or in planning center. So that's super important. If you can, if you're not that person, then we have to have someone do it for you. Um, and that's what we need to identify who's going to work in that capacity. I have volunteers. I have, oh, um, sorry, this is Laura to interrupt. Um, Danny can help too. Uh, probably I'll have to talk to him, but he kind of enjoyed helping with the parade. So um, okay, he might be yeah. he might be interested in doing something like that because he really had a fun with doing that. And few of you know Jackie, um, uh, Jackie Bays, who's here on the call, is my intern, my marketing intern from. Uh, she's a student at U of H, and. Um, she does uh, video for me. She's a photographer, an amazing photographer. She's got like all the gear. Um, oh, she's, a, she's a cinematography student. What's, what's, your, what's your degree in, Jackie? You're muted. Uh, media production with a um, concentration in cinematography. Okay, so Jackie used to be my next door neighbor. And I was like, <laughs> You totally need to be my intern. <laughs> so we connected about maybe six months ago, and she does some of the um, the graphics for planning center events and also stuff for the mobilizer. So she's been helping me um, with that mm -hmm. because it's a lot. And Taylor too. Taylor um, is on the uh, video as well, or he's on the Zoom with us. And those two are are able to help us with doing graphics for our events. Mm -hmm. So we definitely have some resources. So I'm gonna go back to screen. 
Okay. So it is important to learn how to create an event. And um, one thing you need to do is create um, an event using a, a project proposal form. And that can be found um, here using this link. Let me see if I can get it to open. I need to, I need to have this form revised so that it would be ready and uh, able to take information for virtual events. But this is how you submit. Like if I wanted to have a launch, you know, a public launch for our page, I have to fill out one of these project proposal forms. And so um, it would go through uh, Georgette and then Georgette brings it uh, it goes to the um, clergy leadership um, that they get approval, they approve it. And then once that's approved, it goes to the operations team so they can make, make sure that we have the facilities and the resources to accommodate this. And then also if it's, uh, you know, if it requires uh, some kind of special expense, so we definitely use that form quite a bit. Um, there's tons and tons of uh, events happening at the church. So that's internal forms for people who are internal to the church. There's a whole separate uh, way that we have for people that are outside the church to engage with us. And I would have to uh, definitely uh, create a form or revise you know, the one we have in order to include people that are outside the church, but that's all going to be things that we work on together. So there's some notes here on how to set up a messenger room. If you use Facebook Messenger, I don't know why I would use a messenger room, but it was part of the um, Facebook community tutorials that I showed you that page last week on Facebook, the, the one about groups and communities and, you know, how to get one started. So they also have something called a get together, which is really just like um, with meetup software or it's, it's an in-person thing. So I'm not sure why you would go from, you know, I guess there's groups that are local that would use that get together, um, soft or feature um and you would announce it within the group so there may be a time when there is a group of people that maybe are just in houston that are virtual and there may be an instance where they want to get together so they could use that or the event form and then here's the facebook live stuff how to set up a live um that is right and scary. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you right now. Um, the first time I, uh, we did the live streaming for church and set it up as a Facebook live, um, I, it was really, really intense for me. And I think Taylor can attest to that because Taylor has taken over some of the setting up while well, he sets up all the Facebook lives and he sets up all the YouTube streams um, for the AV team every week. And then from there, he uh, sets them up on uh, as an event on Facebook and he sets it up on YouTube as an event, as a premiere or whatever is a, a upcoming scheduled live video. So what we do is, is very, involved in a lot so somebody would have to teach you how to use the facebook live feature um and if we integrate it with some kind of streaming where it's a hybrid event that's even more complex so so lastly um i i went through and came up with some group tags it's super important to have tags on facebook and social media um, so that people can find things. So if I just want to find out what's going on with MRMCC in Houston, 
when I use that tag and I go search on Facebook, it'll show me what's going on um, for people using it. And I think I used RMCC values. I'm going to hash, I'm going to RMCC. And like Debbie can have RMCC kids <laughs> or something. So you can see all the all the um, posts that come up where I used RMCC values. So I posted today about the Owls Christmas party, and those those Owls have way too much fun. Um, and I'm looking at Dan Linquist's sweater here, and it scares me. I didn't um, I didn't enlarge it, <laughs> but um, I think that must have been their um, their ugly Christmas sweater party. It's, but, it scared us too. <laughs> what was that? I don't want to know. Um, uh, anyway, yeah. <laughs> when I hashtag things, it'll, it'll just come up um, in a search. So you can see, I try to hashtag outside of RMCC so that people can see. Like if I were to look on the hashtag Christian life, 39,000 people are using that hashtag. So whatever gets hashtagged with that gets put up here. So someone might discover us if I use that hashtag Christian life. So that's why it's so important. So much going on, on online. It's so crazy. So take a look at these and tell me if they work for you, if we need more. Um, I don't want to have like 100 hashtags. But maybe um, for the, the main things that we do and maybe have RMCC Life be like the main one that is that captures the ones that don't that are like not mainstream, but maybe fall into, you know, our uh, connections again too. RMCC connections is also a good one that we can use. Um, on uh, promoting the new group. So this is the planning for what we're gonna do on uh, January 18th. And if any of you want to volunteer to help me do that, I would be your friend forever. <laughs> I'm gonna sit in the gathering place and with a table and I'm gonna set up a number of iPads so that people can go right to the, um, to the group on Facebook and ask to be a part of it. So, um, and I also want to think about, do we want to, do we want to give away some swag? And then if we do, what does that look like? So we have a month before that all happens. And in between that is Christmas. So, and then part of the um, launch team is going to be greeters. So people that are coming out of the out of church or people that are coming into church um we're going to be there 30 minutes before and 30 minutes after service a couple of sundays um i want people to i'll be having shirts made um boy do i have a list of stuff to do um i'm going to have some shirts made for the people that are on the digital discipleship team uh, or the digital discipleship ministry um and there'll be there'll be fun shirts and everybody will want one and you're only going to get one if you're part of this initial group so um anyway we're going to have a kind of a hoopla um launch of of the group and then um anyway maybe have a photographer there like jackie <laughs> um to take pictures um, that would be fun. And then um, my idea was to have admin meetings maybe once a month. Um, eventually, I would like to hand off the responsibility of the administrative stuff to somebody. But for now, um, as long as I can manage it, I'll be doing it myself. So um, that will be, you know, somebody that gets groomed for that position will be will be the lucky one um 
And my idea for the first 90 days would be um, in the first month, we just want membership. We just want to attract people to the group. We're not going to have a bunch of activities. We're not going to have um, in on behind the scenes. We're going to be um, reaching out to people and deciding, you know, what what it looks like to have a couple of maybe classes that are strictly online and through that virtual uh, through the through the group page. So Reverend Vicki is going to be an important part of that because Reverend Vicki does um, the virtual Wednesday classes. So we hope you continue to do that because it is valuable. Um, anyway, uh, I also want to, um, you know, engage with new members and make sure everybody says hi to them and <laughs> have a recorded video that goes through a new member orientation. So, you know, what does that look like for new members? Um, and then uh, posts about the clergy, the staff, the volunteers, uh, maybe just hello videos real quick, um, going through that so that we, we know who you are and you're not just um, somebody behind a green curtain. So um, we all want to know each other. And then month two, we're going to do a new member mixer. I don't know what that looks like yet or how that's going to work, but it's going to be a fun thing, like a social where everybody gets together that has joined the group and we have a mixer and we'll have prizes and, you know, there'll be a reason for people to come. Um, and then we'll start promoting a couple of events and maybe some classes, um, whatever it is that we've cooked up for, you know, having uh, some, some things to offer. So these were just generic ideas that I came up with, but uh, it doesn't have to be, somebody's trying to join the room. <laughs> Hold on, let me tell them that we're not there. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay, well, they hung up. Okay. You probably so, scared them. Oh, this is this is fun, fun times. Okay, going back. <laughs> Sorry. Um, this is the good fun that happens when stuff is online because you just never know sometimes what's going to happen. Um, anyway, for group uh, for month two, we're going to just start promoting things, uh, activities. And um, month three, I want to have some kind of virtual membership class for like joining Resurrection. Um, and work with Georgette and the pastors on doing that. So that's my spiel for how this is gonna launch. And I just wanna get um, comments and feedback. And what do you think? Do you think I'm on track? Do you think this is doable? Do you think we have the resources to do this? What do you think? I wanna know. I'm not gonna talk anymore. My turn. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Just want to make sure. Um, I had a couple of things. Um, on the event on January the 18th, um, is there a way that we could include the virtual church that day um, for people that might attend virtually and encourage them to also come after church to be able to, to do that? Yes. Yes, Sandy wasn't able to be here tonight because she was sick. Yes. But yes, that is going to be very important that we announce that every week until it happens starting okay. in January. That yes, was the first question. That was the you. that was the first thing. The second thing, when you were talking about the event proposal, uh the one for in church, um is there a way to add it so you can put links on that when you're doing a project proposal? As in graphic links, links or whatever. Yeah, when you're doing your proposal, 
because like right now you can't put uh, links on there or um, PDFs or anything like that. Um, is there a way that we could do that? I, I think it's relatively easy, but that may be just a little bit above me right now. It actually can't be done. And that is a, that's a thing about the, I have a uh, social media, uh, or a, a graphic social media uh, event promotion form. Okay. Um, but it hasn't technically be imp been implemented yet, but um, it exists. And that does allow you to upload. Um, so I need Links to or whatever. refine Those that and make sure it works. And, um, but for right now, I guess I can put on that form that you can just email any PDF or graphic that you have, um, but it has to be a certain size, uh, has to right. be a certain resolution. And yes, that's all important because a lot of times I, I appreciate so much when someone gives me an already done graphic, yeah. but a lot of times it's not the right size. I so haven't, I haven't I used GoDaddy that much. Um, I actually used to use Weebly. Um, and Weebly was really yeah. user, user friendly about adding links, bells and whistles, buttons and everything else when you were creating events or even doing videos or anything else. Um, so I guess that's what I'm I getting at. Can, I can add a link to a online form or I can add a link to that to the website okay. so that it's available to you but it's not going to be on the project proposal form okay it'll be on that page just didn't know if it would make it easier but, because if you get people trained from the get-go to give you everything that we need um or their idea yeah. so that you can grow off of that it makes a big difference and yes I would Great. love to help so uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. now I'll be quiet. No, I appreciate that. Uh, I have to take a note, <clears throat> link to upload um, graphics or PDF. Yeah, or even the link, you know. Yeah. So I don't know, you know, I see Debbie here and what I wanna know, what your interest level is and what it is, how we can incorporate some kind of children's activities. Um, that would be super wonderful to me um, to be able to have maybe a children's place where kids can go um, online uh, in, in the group um, and then an, another place for young or teens and then young adults. So I definitely want age appropriate stuff on there. Um, it can even be just a little place where they can go into the portal and there's something to read or, or a Bible story or some a place to color. So what do you think? Um, I think all those are good ideas. I'm not sure um, with the younger children you know, or, or kids going on and parents not knowing they're going on. Yeah. You know, so some of your privacy stuff, we might have to look at some of that. Um, yeah. I think um, starting out at a jump point, I think the teens would be the way to start, maybe work our way down to the younger kids. And maybe, I know you have a lot of hashtags, but maybe one that's at least family. And then, um, you know, like RMCC families or something. Uh, and we could branch off from that. I would love to have some stuff for the younger children. Um, I'm just not sure what that's going to look like. Uh, Maybe a story time. Yeah. Something where you just where, get on right. and read a story. Mm -hmm. And then with the teens, that I really think um, if they could have something that's theirs, that would be good because some of our teens right now, they're not old enough to drive. 
So they're not, you know, even, even with coming to church or coming to events or anything like that, there's a lot of them that they're going to want to do it without their families mm -hmm. and they're going to want to be searching on their own. Mm -hmm. This is the perfect venue for them. Yeah. So I don't know many teens except <laughs> for like one or two. So maybe mm -hmm. you and I can get together and talk about what does that look like? So sure. who are our teens? And maybe mm -hmm. get a spokesperson or yes. a influencer. Okay. Who are our teams? Any Is other Michael ideas? Still fall in that category. Is, um, Michael. Were you, yeah. Um. Were you still talking, Vicky? No. Okay. I I just wanted to add on to it. Uh, Debbie was saying about the teens, I think there's a huge, huge potential for a lot of teens to be searching for things totally unbeknownst to their parents. There are so many kids out there who expl are exploring their gender orientation, their, their sexual orientation, their gender identity, and um, they're just searching. They're mm -hmm. searching for anything they can find and any, any kind of affiliation they can find. So... I don't even have any idea what so, that all is going to look like, but isn't there a, a, a Montrose a place, something place? Uh, there's a an organization for Grace Place. What is it? Grace Place. Grace Place. So, like, that would be great to involve them, maybe into some kind of a. Uh, maybe a monthly chat or something we have to talk to them about it but I think it's important to make sure um, that we get somebody that can do it consistently um, we need some consistency so if we start something we have to have someone take the reins on it um, and what does that look like so mm -hmm. A grown-up person would have to be the administrator of that group, but it could definitely have uh, teens in the group. Ken, yeah, okay, I didn't know that, and I know Ken, so that's good. yeah. So lots and lots to do. If you have ideas of nonprofits or um, organizations in the community that we could partner with to have them as guest speakers or um, you know include them somehow in in things that we do, do that would be lovely um, I just think there's you know uh, there's lots of ways to encourage people to uh, see who we are and um, experience what it what it is to be part of our our church. Uh, I think that young people don't have the structure that they need um, in life. And I think that even though we call ourselves a church, we're still uh, we're still something somewhat structure for some kids that 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 in their lives. So <laughs> even if we don't call it a church, <laughs> you know, it's it's a place where you can feel where you can be yourself and where you can relate to each other. And that's what they were talking about on the discipleship thing is relevance and how that all works in attracting people to come to your, um, you know, to your group. So, so I appreciate once again, your input, your participation and your consistency in coming to um, visit with us and talk about the future. And um, we have two more classes after this. I'm gonna try to make next week pretty light since it's gonna be Christmas week. Um, I may just check in with people to see if they have any input and any ideas uh, for uh, connecting with uh, certain places and get your feedback on the document that, I'm sent, that I sent out. So that will be that. And um, then we'll talk about maybe the following week, who maybe wants to do, you know, be in charge of something or, you know, have, even if it's just a 90 day commitment, I would, 
I'd appreciate knowing that I can go, you know, we have this person in place to get this started. So thank you, Bob. Thank you, Kathleen, Debbie, Randy, Laura, Carol, Marco, Vicki, Taylor, and Jackie. Thank you for being here tonight. And um, I look forward to chatting with you next week and look for the email that has the link to the document. Okay. If you need anything, just email me, Suzette at resurrectionmcc.org. Bye, Marco. We love you. Thank you all. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> See you next week. Suzette? Yes. What email are you using for me? Vicki at Resurrection MCC. Okay. I just got to see if I'm getting this stuff. Yeah, you are. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.